Environmental Science, subject for triple three, module six, lesson nineteen, original and concept of sustainable development. Hello, learners. Welcome to our senior secondary environmental science course of NIOS. I am Nilam Gupta, course coordinator of environmental science. Welcome to this program of NIOS. In our previous programs, we have already discussed about importance and methods of conservation of biodiversity, soil, water, energy, and other natural resources of module five, environmental conservation. Humans were made a very impressive economic progress, especially during the past two centuries, in creating material and luxuries of lifestyle. This progress has been achieved at a tremendous cost of the environment, ever increasing exploitation of natural resources, coupled with environmental degradation, has reached a point that now threatens the well-being and future of mankind. Environmentalists and ever the common men around the world are seeking answer to these questions like can we keep up industrial and economic development without depleting or degrading our natural resources? Can forests be cleared endlessly for cultivation and habitation? Can agricultural land be regularly used up for building cities, factories and shopping malls? Can intensive farming be earned out through the year? Can fossil fuels be pumped out in a never-ending manner? How long can our natural resources last at the increasing rate of exploitation and consumption? The answer to these questions will explain the concept of sustainable development. So the objective of this program are explain the origin and concept of sustainable development, explain the concept of carrying capacity, distinguish between common and private resources, bring out the relationship between population growth and resource availability, Describe the consequences of inequitable and exhaustive use of resources. Justify the need to conserve and manage resources for posterity. Explain the need for just equitable sharing of resources and justify the need for development without destruction. So we will discuss lesson 19, origin and concept of sustainable development of module 6, sustainable development during this program. For detailed discussion of this lesson, we will have with us Dr. Rita Khosla, Associate Professor retired from Delhi College, University of Delhi. She will discuss this lesson in detail. Welcome you, Madam. Thank you, Neelam. Our father of the nation, Mahatma Gandhi, was ahead of his times when he in 1940s cautioned us about overuse of resources by his famous saying, quote, there is sufficient in the world for man's need, but not enough for man's greed." Unquote. Our greed for more luxuries in the form of greater varieties of gadgets, vehicles, clothes, food items and entertainment system is making us waste resources and energy. In earlier times, people never used that much resources. We were Earlier times, our forefathers were happy with one vehicle in the family or few clothes, but now our needs have been overcome by our greed. What is the meaning of sustainable development for a common man? It is economic development of a nation without negative effect on the quality of the environment and health of the people. These days, we do not get fresh air to breathe or clean drinking water because of unsustainable development. Few decades back, we never saw an Indian carrying a water bottle or wearing a face mask. However, now it is commonly seen sight because of environment degradation. The present day environment deterioration provides evidence that misuse and overuse of resources by humans is responsible for unsustainable environment, rapid industrialization, urbanization and the associated consumerism is leading to unsustainable development. Every country wants to become industrialized, but it should not be done at the cost of the environment. Therefore, the need of the hour is to go for sustainable development. We are at crossroads of development and it is a time to rethink our priorities. Let's take a hypothetical case. Will a person be happy if he has a luxurious diesel car but does not get clean air to breathe? Which one will he choose? The car which causes air pollution or fresh air? 
that is there's a debate between luxury versus environment normally people want both the benefits of industrial development as well as an healthy environment so far development has been at the cost of environment quality that is very sad the question is are we using more resources than what is ecologically right now we will discuss about carrying capacity we are consuming nature's resources faster than the earth can renew them forests are cut down faster than they can regenerate fishes are harvested faster than their population can multiply fossil fuel is used up faster than it can be produced also aquifers cannot be recharged as fast as ground water is consumed all the east things point out that we are not living within the limits of earth's resources and we are exploiting nature beyond its carrying capacity for our greed a good example to explain the concept of carrying capacity is that of a boat if a boat has a capacity to carry 6 passengers and if 10 persons sit on the boat it is possible that the boat will topple and the passengers will drown similarly a planet can collapse any day as we are using its resources beyond its carrying capacity we should conserve the natural resources to save our earth due to overpopulation there is excessive use and misuse of natural resources such as water forest soil minerals etc we are using these resources beyond the earth's carrying capacity this is leading to environment problems such as climate change pollution deforestation soil erosion soil loss and infertility disappearance of plants and animals origin and concept of sustainable development let's read about this now in early 1970s the idea of sustainable development was conceived when the world became aware of the fact that our natural resources were depleting at a very fast rate more than 7 billion people are recklessly using earth's resources and are degrading the environment by pollution global warming waste generation and deforestation the natural resources of the earth including the air water land flora and fauna must be safeguarded for the benefit of present and future generation through careful planning this fact was highlighted in the united nations conference on the human environment where 113 countries participated at stockholm in june 1972 It was also agreed by the member nations that the protection and improvement of human environment needed participation of the people of the whole world and it was the duty of all governments to establish relevant policies by late 1970s it was recognized the world over that the environment and development were not two separate issues but interdependent concerns now we will discuss brundtland commission although the word sustainability has been in use for some time it became popular after brundtland commission which highlighted the need for sustainable development the world commission on environment and development that is wced was set up in 1983 it was chaired by then norwegian prime minister Gro Harlem Brundtland The Brundtland Commission which was named after her was first developed the concept of sustainable development when it published the, its report known as Our Common Future in 1987 The report gave the widely used definition of sustainable development which states sustainable development is that development that meets the need of the present without compromising the ability of the future generation to meet their own needs need for just and equitable share of resources 
The definition of sustainable development emphasizes that the natural resources are important for our present day survival and also for the survival of our future generations. Any present development activity or program must consider its future consequences. Future generations should not inherit a degraded environment. We should hand over a safe, healthy and resourceful environment to our future generations. According to Brendan report, the three fundamental components of sustainable development are the three E's, environment protection, economic growth and social equity. As you can see in figure one, environment protection is on top and then we have economic growth and social equity. So these are the three pillars of sustainable development. You cannot have sustainable development which does not include care for the environment or economic growth or social equity. Environment protection. Use of eco-friendly technologies to conserve and enhance Earth's resources should be adopted by all nations. Economic growth. A stable and healthy economy should be achieved by making better use of resources and developing technology. Crop improvement programs, green technologies and using renewable clean fuel, better medical facilities, etc. will support the economic growth of the poor countries and narrow the gap between developed and developing nations. Social equity, it means there should be a minimum level of income and environment quality for all human beings. Sustainable development advocates for equity, particularly intergenerational equity. That means one generation should pass on healthy environment to next generation. Poverty and environment degradation. The term pollution of poverty was used for the first time in Stockholm in 1972 to refer to inadequate environment condition for the poor. In Stockholm conference, the Indian Prime Minister remarked that poverty and unmet human needs were the worst kind of pollution. Today, we all realize that poverty cannot be overcome if we neglect the environment or development. Now we will discuss about consequences of inequitable and exhortative use of resources. In order to achieve a sustainable life, a balanced and equal distribution of natural resources is necessary throughout the world so that the basic needs of each and every living being may be fulfilled. The rich consume much more than their fair share of resources more than the planet can provide for everyone. Certain societies consume more and create more waste than others. For example, an average American consumes about 50 times more than an average Bangladeshi and generates at least 50 times more waste. The high levels of consumption by the rich lead to resource depletion and waste accumulation. These days we see the rich people are spending, wasting so much of resources for their weddings and other gala functions. So they are the culprits who are wasting the resources. The poor have no alternative but to use resources in a short-sighted way. For example, cutting down trees for firewood before they are able to grow to their full height. Common resources are prone to over-exploitation. As no one owns these resources and they are available to users at little or no charge. Example of common resource are air, water, land, forest, ocean, river, mountains and wildlife. We are polluting our holy rivers Ganga and Yamuna as they belong to no one. Similarly, roads, streets, gardens, our heritage monuments are also public properties and misused. We should take care of common resources as we do our private resources. Next section is relationship between population growth and resource availability. Human population and resource scarcity. The main cause of unsustainability is in ever increasing human population. 
with increasing human population and natural resources are declining both in quantity and quality. Due to population increase, the natural resources are under increasing pressure, threatening public health and development. Water shortage, soil degradation, loss of forests, air and water pollution afflict many areas. As the world's population grows, improving living standards without destroying the environment is a global challenge. Population explosion is bringing about destruction of Earth's life support system. More than half of the world's population will be living in the cities by the end of 21st century. Meeting the basic needs of food, water and housing for the urban population will be difficult. Most developed countries currently consume resources much faster than they can regenerate. Developing countries such as India, which has rapid population growth, should focus on economic development without environment degradation. This figure shows the impact of overpopulation. Overpopulation is the cause of pollution, diseases, deforestation, loss of biodiversity, energy crisis, food scarcity, housing problem and so on. And this depicts how use and misuse of resources by growing human population is having tremendous impact on environment and human welfare. Next, we will discuss ecological footprint. Ecological footprint is measured by the unsustainability of a nation. The first publication about ecological footprint was by William Rees and co-workers in 1992. An ecological footprint is the amount of land and water needed to produce the resources needed by an average person in a country. It is a measure of the load imposed by a particular population or nation on nature. A rich person with lots of gadgets, cars and who often travels by air internationally and spends lot of resources in entertainment has big ecological footprint. Whereas a poor person who uses cycle to travel has very few gadgets and has low income has low ecological footprint. In 2009, the US per capita footprint was 9.6 global hectares. That means a single American consumed energy and materials equal to that produced by 9 hectares of area, as can be seen in figure 3. Developing countries such as India has relatively low ecological footprint of 0.8%. However, since Indian population is more than a billion, its total ecological footprint is higher than that of Netherlands, which has less population. As we can see in this figure, India has 0.8, Netherlands 3.8 and United States of America 9.6 per capita ecological footprint. The ecological footprint was given by the data from World Wide Fund for Nature. On a per capita basis, the countries with biggest ecological footprints are Kuwait, Qatar, United Arab Emirates and other Gulf countries, Denmark, Belgium, Singapore, United States of America, Bahrain and Sweden. The people in these countries have wasteful lifestyles. We would need 1.5 Earth to regenerate the current demand of resources if our wasteful lifestyle continues. Next, we will discuss development without destruction of environment. The work of Brennland Commission was followed up at the Earth Summit, the first United Nations Conference on Environment and Development, UNSAID. It was held in Rio de Janeiro in June 1992. It was a landmark event where Lakhs of people participated and launched an unprecedented global partnership for economic and social development along with environment protection. It represented a turning point in the way we look at the environment and development. At the Earth Summit, world leaders adopted 21, a blueprint to attain sustainable development. India has also adopted Agenda 21, under Ministry of Environment. They proposed, Agenda 21 proposed that development countries have to take the lead by 
decreasing their production and consumption patterns. Developing countries such as India must maintain their development goals but use sustainable development methods. The industries in India have to take environment clearance from Environment Ministry that is MOEFCC Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change. You will learn more about it in Lesson 24 of your Environmental Science course. Need to conserve and manage the source for prosperity will be our next topic. The greatest challenge for humanity today is the sustainable management of our planet. A kind of revolution is necessary to bring changes in lifestyle pattern. New innovative green technologies have to be adopted to manage resources for posterity. It is our responsibility to check our activities to save the earth for future generation. Some of the green technologies are use of renewable energy such as solar, wind, biofuels, use of fuel efficient vehicles, energy from waste, water conservation by rainwater harvesting, planting of trees, waste management by reduce, reuse, recycle, using energy saving devices, vermicomposting, organic farming. What can a common man do to make the earth sustainable? You can change your lifestyle, consume less resources, do not waste water, electricity, paper, food, etc. Use renewable sources of energy such as bioenergy, solar energy and wind energy. Use environment friendly fuels for your vehicles such as CNG. Increase the cover in your neighborhood. Create less waste by practicing the three R's, reduce, reuse and recycle. Use cloth carry bag instead of plastic bag to prevent plastic pollution. Increase the green cover in your neighborhood. Use cycle to travel short distances. Use carpool or public transport. Use organic food to discourage the use of chemical fertilizers and pesticides which cause pollution. Thank you. It was nice discussing and going in depth about what is our responsibility and how we can bring about sustainable development of our nation and the whole world. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Rita Kosla, for sharing information related to sustainable development. Before we wrap up, we would like to recap the main points that is what you have learned. Economic development is necessary for the welfare of people, but it should not be the, at the cost of environmental degradation. Human activities like agriculture, industrialization, etc., affect sustainability of biosphere. Resource is anything useful or can be made useful to humans to meet their needs and wants. We should not use or misuse our resources such as water, soil, forest, plants, and animals. Carrying capacity is the maximum pressure or load that a system can withstand or take up before breaking down. Carrying capacity of the environment may also be defined as maximum use of human activities that the environment can tolerate. Sustainable development is development that meets the needs of the present, taking the care of the needs of future generations. Human activities meant to improve the quality of life are usually accompanied by environmental degradation. Rapid growth of population coupled with demand and needs of men for material comforts has put tremendous pressure on earth and its environment. Most dangerous consequences of population is poverty. Poverty is a major threat to human health and environment. One method of eliminating poverty is by taking care of equitable, that is far and just distribution of resources. Resources that belong to no one in particular became common property, examples, air, water, river, forest, oceans, mountain, etc. Each of us must treat the common natural resources with same amount of care as one treats the personal things. Privately owned industries, agricultural land, houses, buildings, offices, garden, etc. are cared for and looked after by the owners. Ecological footprint is a measure of area of the earth required per person and waste productions. Ecological footprint of most people in developed countries is large because of the huge amount of consumption of natural resources. There is need to conserve and manage the resources for posterity. 
In order to improve the environment, it is important to act and encourage others for conservation of natural resources. Dear learners, this is all about lesson 19, origin and concept of sustainable development. We will come again to meet you with a new program of environmental science. Thank you.